Hello, everyone. I'm Brett Chastain. Marin Sherling. Firat Kizan. Tian Yu Liao. And our group worked with Architecture Technology Corporation, or ATC. So a little overview of the talking points we'll be talking about today. Uh, we have our project introduction, where we'll go over a little bit of the background of the company that we are working for, the system we're working with, and the project description. Now we'll move on to our solution, which we will talk about our goals to accomplish this project. Uh, from there, we'll go on to the demo, which we will talk about the um, showcase our work that we've done so far. Then on to the current requirement statuses, which will show what we've accomplished and what still needs to be done. Move on to the risks and issues that we've uh, encountered during this project, and then the post-mortem summary and next steps. So, Architecture Technology Corporation um, is a R&D and engineering company with a focus on um, networking, cybersecurity, and high um, high performance computing, um, among among other things. But our project mainly focuses on the cybersecurity and networking portions. Um, Within these fields, they build innovative products, one of which is the Siren system. So what is Siren? <coughs> Siren is a next generation cyber range. It's essentially a um, cloud computing kind of setup where you have a bunch of virtual machines such as workstations and servers that allow you to simulate real world scenarios uh, for training and testing. So this could be something like breaking into a server to steal a file, or defending against someone breaking into your server to steal a file. This is just kind of knowledge that would kind of be difficult to come by practically in the real world. So it allows you a sort of sandbox, if you would, to try out all these different things. Um, it includes a graphical exercise builder, which we may use of to uh, help with our project, as well as a system uh, that monitors student progress via agents that sit and listen uh, to the VMs that are uploaded to this system for changes in files or files being deleted or logins, uh, among several other things. So our project, we were assigned to create a training module for the Siren system that uh, teaches a user how to respond to an advanced persistent threat. Um, so an advanced persistent threat is a threat that sits on the system for a period of time um, often it's months to even a year that will sit in the background and gather data, be it passwords, usernames, or uh, important files, and then send them off to someone who's not supposed to have it, essentially. And to accomplish this, we should also simulate a realistic enterprise environment so that um, the user can take this information and use it in a realistic setting as well. Uh, from there, I'll hand it off to Aaron, who will talk about our solution. So to accomplish this, uh, we have created five objectives that the student user must accomplish before being able to cleanse the system of the APT. So first off, they have to locate the infected user, and then they have to log in to the infected user and identify the process, close it, delete the virus contents, and then delete the infected virus on our virus email. So if you move over to the Siren network, over here in the top section, we have the objectives. Uh, I'll get to the network layout below in a little bit. So up here, I apologize, you can't really see all of them. Uh, JavaScript doesn't size it properly, but that's not ours. Uh, that was given to us. So up top, we have, on the very left, we have an objective, and then an objective is then followed by a skill, which you need to satisfy. And then we have an agent, which listens. So this particular one sits on the system, or the specific virtual machine, and listens to a file. And it checks to see in the directory and the file uh, which has been modified. Uh, you can set them to modify, deleted, or created on the specific agent. But if we move up, there are about 15 odd agents that we've been given to use. We've only accomplished about like five of them or utilized five of them. And some of the some of the objectives can get pretty crazy as well. You can get and and or logics. 
and it can get pretty intensive. So to accomplish the realistic business enterprise, we had to <coughs> image a few VMs. So first off, we imaged a domain controller and DNS server, which are Samba-based. And then we moved on to the file server, which is well Samba-based. We decided to incorporate an email server, which is Postfix and has a snail client. And then, of course, we have to have a firewall. So that is PFSense. And that was probably the biggest issue, which we'll get into a little bit later. So here was our initial network diagram. Our initial network diagram included two firewalls, as well as a web server, mail server, DNS server, file server, and AD server. Uh, as you can see, these are all IPv4 addresses. Uh, we decided, or we had to switch over to IPv6 due to siren constraints. So this is our current working network diagram. We only have one firewall, because we ran into issues configuring two of them. So we have the one firewall. We also got rid of the web server and the AD server, and we compiled the domain controller and the DNS server into one thing, so that's just on there as DNS server. We also, like I was saying, uh, we changed all the IPv4s into IPv6s. So this is our current network. And then inside of Siren, below, here is what it looks like. So on the left, we have the malicious user connected to the firewall, which simulates the internet. And then we have a bridge then going to two more email, or an email server and an ADS server. And then the workstations on the right. So moving on, I'm going to pass it off, and we're going to talk about current requirement statuses. Um, so starting off, we had a lot of requirements for this project. So some of them that we really had to complete are obviously that we have to image all the VMs and populate them with noise, which is very essential for the system, because unless you have them, you can't really deploy anything and give anything for the user to um, look into. So we had the uh, images of the VMs, we populated them with noise, and we upload them obviously to the v, uh, science system so that from the front end, any user or a student who's probably trying to learn will be able to access it. And then we have the file population scripts that we had, <coughs> we, were, we wrote to populate the VM, and we had the virus script obviously, which is very important. Uh, but some of the requirements that we, pro we still haven't completed are the test tasks in the right, uh, science system that we have to write to see how it will probably run all the agents and how the network is running. And for that to happen, we need the agents, all of the agents, to be working uh, exactly right. But we have some trouble configuring some of the agents still. And we have to create evidence for the user to find in the infected VM. But uh, in the real world scenario, we, uh, the APT would not really leave any log files behind or anything like that. So we haven't really fabricated any log files and large mm -hmm. archive format files containing the stolen files, exactly. And we move on to the demo to show a little bit about workstations, the virus script, the email server, the siren, uh, the siren agents that Aaron was talking about, and the active domain controller and the firewall. So I'll be talking about uh, showing you a little about the workstations that we have, to, which are mainly incorporated in the environment to make it look very realistic, like in any other enterprise. So it, is, it simulates workers in the environment. It is populated with noise, so that it is very difficult to find the virus file. So that's how we have populated the file with um, random documents, and we have directories inside directories. And we, I have basically populated the desktop, the documents, and the downloads, and the pictures. So in some of the documents, we have actually ha um, had some of the blueprints that we had downloaded, just so that we can make it look like a real workstation. And we have probably three directories. Yeah. Now we move on to the wire script. That is 
Yeah, uh, so for the virus script, it uh, zips files from the infected workstation. Uh, it sends them via C TCP over port 5001 to the malicious user outside of the business environment. Uh, we chose port 5001 just because it's a port that's not really used by anything. I looked it up and I believe it was used by some Yahoo networking or chat client, so probably not something you'd see on a general enterprise workstation, so it would come up as suspicious when you're looking in the firewall. And then the script also removes traces of the file aggregation, so it will zip things up and then remove them. And then we will switch over to my computer here. So the script, as it is, works on, works via um, IPv4. So we had a little bit of an issue with the static IPs being IPv6, so that would be something we'd have to continue working on. If I can get this book in here. All right, and I blue screened, so <laughs> that's an interesting one. Um, well, I guess um, I was going to show that you could run this file on the infected workstation and it would um, take two files, zip them up, and then send them off, in this case every five seconds. On the siren system it would be ideally every 20 seconds. And the reason I chose two files in 20 seconds would be um, so essentially the script would not run out of files before it would stop. Because once it gets to the very last file it will stop running and that would be to uh, that the user has enough uh, real-time uh, sort of traffic to see files going in and out um, and then the server will download them and save them uh, with just a date time format and this on the server it really doesn't matter how it's saved just that it's getting sent there because every time this, the test restarts that server will start clean uh, so moving on, we will go to the email server. So the email server was very important because it was the point of the virus entry. We decided to go with a POP3 configuration uh, instead of an IMAP3. We decided to do POP3 because all of the emails are aggregated in one place on the email server instead of being uh, copied on the workstations so that the student user would be able to easily look at one area instead of looking in multiple places. The email server contains quite a bit of noise to make parsing it difficult, so you can't just look in there and then you find the virus script immediately. There's around 90,000 emails in there. So moving over to the email server, we might have to enter a password. Oh, yeah. So here's the directory. Uh, we also decided to do a mail dir instead of mbox. So mbox, it's an older version of a, a directory, email directory, because it sends all of the received emails into one file instead of creating individual files for them. So the mdir, uh, it packages them up with a random name, I assume based on date time, and then puts them in their own file. And it also has a sent file, which is all the sent emails that you send out through the email. So you have current, new, and temp. Currently, there's only emails inside of new. So moving on. So here's one of the emails that we sent. As you can see, the date right here uh, is randomized each and every time to simulate actual emails. Then you have subject lines, which are taken from uh, actual email, business emails, and then further down we have the subject line. And these are actual subject lines. We actually took them from the Enron email database, and these are actual Enron <laughs> emails, so that's kind of interesting. Um, that does it for the email server. Moving on, I will demonstrate a few of the siren agents. So the siren agents allow us to set criteria for test evaluation for the user. They listen to the VM for specific criteria and requirements to see if they've been accomplished. 
So the agents that we decided to use were directory changing agents, file alterations, command execution, and process start slash stop. And moving back over. So on the email server, I already have this in here. Uh, so this is the virus script email. So currently, if you go up top, uh, here are all the VMs. You can shut them, start them, connect to them. And then over here, none of the objectives have been accomplished. And then we're going to delete the email server, or not delete the virus script. That'd be bad if we deleted the whole email server. And there it is. We've achieved the objective of defeat or deleting the infected email, and it's checked. So this was a file process monitor or file monitor agent. And then we can move over and check out another agent. Uh, the next agent I will be showcasing is a command logger. So this particular agent, you have to wrap the certain command around Uh, you have to wrap the certain command around a uh, siren script. I don't know why this isn't working. Well, I guess we're not logging in. <laughs> so this particular, uh, what, it, what it does is you have to wrap the command, and then once you process the command, it then sends it to a particular log file, and then the agent will listen on a 15 second interval as to whether you've actually ran the command. And it should take about like 10 seconds, and then you fulfill the objective. But I guess this VM is going rogue, and it doesn't want me to showcase it. So we're going to move on. Uh, yeah. uh, so the firewall is based on the uh, free BSD operating system. Uh, and in real life, the firewall basically provide the main functions of port blocking and package filtering. And for this project, the firewall, uh, this one important job that is tracking coming and outgoing packets. Uh, and for the demo part, uh, I chose to take a screenshot instead of live demo because uh, normally, the firewall on the same system, uh, when it started up, it took so well to configure it itself. And also, uh, since uh, our project doesn't uh, really use uh, the internet, because the malicious user is actually simulate the internet, so we won't have uh, this much internet traffic to show here. So. I decided to take a screenshot to show the network traffic on my own personal computer. And you can see the uh, source and destination of that packet. And you can also see the size of the packets. And this would be very useful to tracking the uh, if the malicious users send the uh, virus to the users. Uh, and next, uh, Phil will cover the domain controllers. So uh, the role of the domain controller in the system uh, was, you know, a network directory service, as the name suggests, store information about the computer network and offers features and retrieving and managing uh, that information. So. So essentially, it's a database composed of records or objects describing users and available network resources, uh, as such as like servers, printers, and all application in the system. And then if you and then if you see it authenticates and can you get up? Oh, no, sorry. And authenticates and authorize all users and computers in the system. Plus, it's assigned and enforcing security pol policies for all computers and installing our updating uh, software. So as you see here, it is uh, like in my computer, and when I'm running, uh, it is, uh, it's working locally in my computer, but there was some issues with the static IP addresses in the silent system, so that's why uh, we cannot show you in the silent system, uh, unfortunately. And from now, And uh, 
about the risk and issues for the project. Uh, so for now, uh, we are not being uh, able to create realistic uh, virus and network layout uh, because the realistic virus will be extremely complicated to create. And also, uh, as previous statement, uh, we don't have a realistic network layout because we have some trouble to create a dual firewall with the DMZ zone. And, uh, and also, we figure out for the exercise, we don't really need a uh, DMZ zone. So uh, we didn't create a realistic network layout. Uh, and also, uh, since we are lack of knowledge of uh, networking uh, of network configurations, uh, there is uh, we have some troubles with configuring the IPv4 and IPv6 static address. Uh, there is some conflicts when we upload our virtual machines to the server system because uh, the server system over uh, is overwriting our. IPv4 address with IPv6 address. Uh, also, the domain controller we used has issues uh, with yeah. with the static okay. IP, as Farad stated before, and this caused uh, a significant delay. So, as we wanted to test all of the virtual machines. Uh, and finally, uh, we still have trouble with configuring the agents for some of our virtual machines. And next, uh, Ferris cover the summary. So, post my, my, my Martin summary. So, so far through the project, it's been three months, and we learned a lot about the APTs. Uh, uh, and we learn about how to set up VMs. Actually, we set up so many VMs, and uh, we learn how to set up the network for several VMs too. So, and then we actually got to use a totally new system, Siren system, and then try to first of all uh, configure everything about the system, and then upload all these things. So, we are still working on so many uh, parts of the project and with all ups and downs that come with it. And then uh, the next step for us is uh, we are going to finish configuring the agents. We did already figure uh, few, like, like four of them, but we have to still work on the rest of the agents and then try to figure out and then get the DNS and domain controller working on the siren. It works in the computer, that my personal computer, but then when, I, when we try to upload the system, it just gives some com configuration problems. We have to work on that. And then add the users to the domain uh, on siren and testing the system on the front end. So then simulate network traffic on the internal network. So that will make the suspicious traffic harder to find. And uh, finally, I would like to thank everybody to come here and watch the presentation. If you have guys have any question, go ahead and ask. Thank you again. So there were a number of issues that you guys were running into, and this is I know this is a new thing for them too. They're just developing. Are you writing up like uh, some? kind of a report at the end that says, here's suggestions for how to make it easier for people writing exercises? Uh, yes, I actually wrote three readmes on how to configure agents and I, static IPs. I got some of the static IPs to work, but not all of them. So I'm getting there. Uh, I also have a list of changes in my mind, but they know that. And I keep, I, I tell them all every time that they come up and all the bugs. But uh, that'd be a good idea to compile them all into one place. Yeah, yeah. a lot of things we'd, we'd upload something and then it wouldn't work and we'd contact our sponsor and be like, yeah, we know what's going on there. Let me just change something in the back end and then it would go through. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's still pretty buggy on the back end. Any other questions? How would you rate the uh, China and the Russian and the American uh, hacking ability? Hacking ability? 
Um, I would have to say that once we create this simulation, we will be one leg up on the Russians <laughs> and the Chinese. We are so, Chinese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do we got the Chinese here? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Hope you guys have a good day.